So let's go back to Don. And that's a great point that Takeshi just made because this kind of ties into what you and I have spoken about this in meetings uh, before all this happened. What led you after this huge history of Kenny Omega, both from a family standpoint, you talked to his mother, Marla, Marla, and you've helped guide him to the IWGP Championship mm-hmm. and the AEW Championship. Mm-hmm. What happened, man? What, what made you turn on, on, on your nephew? <laughs> Your, your lifelong people, nephew, people, man. People like uh, simplifications. I'm very angry at myself that I allowed this to happen because I always said, I've said this before, that I never wanted children because I knew there would come a time that, as all parents have that moment, where you look at your child and you realize that they're a colossal disappointment and you're disgusted with them and you just have to move on. Yeah, I didn't want to have that. Right. And, but I thought with Kenny I wouldn't because he was so special athletically. Yeah. His athleticism matched my brain power. And I thought, when you meld those two things together, then you can beat anyone. You can have it all. And we did for a period of time. It wasn't one thing. It was an accumulation. It was being with him in a hospital for a year by his side, waiting for him to get better. And then finally we come back and, and I had a plan in place where we were going to challenge for the aw world championship in the first two months he's kenny omega he doesn't have rust yeah yeah. but no it was we're going to come out to a country western song with the young bucks and we're going to do it we're yeah we're going to do we're going to do a trios match and you know i mean it's kind of like i remember lex luger saying you know if you have a lamborghini you know you can use it to drive to walmart every day and you can get dents in it it's still called a Lamborghini, but it's not the same sports car. And you still got to pay the, pay the nut on it every month. That, to me, is what he was doing. He would, we had a Lamborghini, and we are wasting it. For him to be, all he cares about is his friends. Kenny is very close with the Bucks and Hangman Page. That's very nice, Chris. I'm very close with you. But I'd, I would not put my... I'd stab you in the back in a second yeah. to get ahead. We understand that about each other. Yeah. It, we're, we support each other 100%, yeah. but if it's you or me, it's me yeah, and yeah, the other way yeah, around. Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd take he, the knife he, out of the back and wish you the best. K- K- Kenny <laughs> is not wired like that. Yeah. And the reality is the Bucks are a generational tag team, but compared to Kenny Omega or to Takeshita, they're insects. They're nothing. They're a great tag team, but they're not Kenny Omega, what he was when he was with me. And then with more time off. And then we go to Tokyo, and that was the last time I saw the real Kenny Omega. When the we Osprey beat Will match. Ospreay, gotcha. The Osprey match. And I said, okay, you just beat Will Osprey. What are we going to do? Let's get the world title back. Guess what? Best of seven trios. And, I, and Chris, you have to understand, you know how I operate. I don't have a lot of patience. And I'm having to deal with the young bucks and all of the blather that comes with that and, and all of those insecurities and this very weird... You ever had a friend who was in a relationship with a girl or a guy... And when they're away from that relationship, they're great. Yeah. But when they're around that person, they become this codependent, yes. weak little cuck. And that's exactly what I saw Kenny becoming when he was with the Young Bucks. You know what I never have to beg Takeshita to do? Wrestle. Right. Work out. Takeshita doesn't say, I can't wrestle today. I can't work out today because I'm going to Rancho Cucamonga to play video games with my buddies. Right. So God bless them. They can have a lovely life together. But what's going to be exposed now and why I did what I did was to show the world there's Kenny Omega and then there's Kenny Omega with Don Callis. And the Kenny Omega without Don Callis is not the same Kenny Omega. The real God of pro wrestling in this relationship was actually me because what does God do, Chris? He creates. I created everything for Kenny Omega. And why did I do something as heinous as they say as stab him in the face? Because if it were anything less than that, he would have come crawling back to me, saying, I need you, I need you, please come back. I had to do something where there would be a clean break to protect my own emotions. Because this has been very hard on me. This is, as you know, the only family I've known for 25 years. And it's been destroyed. So I learned a lesson. They say you can't choose your family, Chris. I'm fixing to choose mine. I've already started. The Don Callis family starts with this guy, Takeshita. Because he is a stud athlete. He passes the eye test. 6'3", 240. Yes. He was a competitive decathlete. That means 10 events for your listeners. 
He didn't have to be good at one thing like Kenny was at hockey. He had to be good at 10 things. He was an Olympic-level decathlete. That's the kind of athlete he is. Look at him. Looks like a rock star. He's the type of guy who walks into his room and his dick's already been there for two minutes. You know? He's a (laughs) stud. This is a stud athlete. And this is the new Kenny Omega. This is the future. 